I make brutal power. Silent. Good morning. Would you mind please introduce yourself and the Strix company, please? Good morning, of course. I'm uh, Sasha Emin, co-owner and director of RTC company. Yeah, RTC is basically the short name for a research technolo technological center. And this is the company that was basically established in 2001 uh, on the basis of the production, uh, truck production plant from uh, Maribor City in Slovenia. And uh, RTC is also established uh, the Strix like a spin-off. Strix was specially opened uh, only for purposes to uh, produce and develop uh, light off-road vehicles uh, from which, uh, for example, the electric motorbike is the first one in the process. And so, with such an expertise, in fact, how did the idea come up for an electric motorbike? It was like that. I owned one 450 cubics a while ago, and uh, this motorbike was quite a pain in the ass, I would say. So, I destroyed <laughs> a few pain. I destroyed quite a, quite a few pairs of boots on that motorbike because of a kickstart. When you fall on the middle of the hill, it was impossible to ignite it again. Yeah, I, I had a lot of time to think about how to make it better in the middle of the hill. So the, the bike that was on the, the best recognized in the armies in the past was basically 450 cubics. So if I compare now our bike directly with 450 cubics, we are playing with the bike which has the same weight then uh, when you have uh, you have no internal combustion engine so you basically are much uh, the noise level is really the lowest possible so it's hard to track you uh, then you have uh, for example also the heat print of the motorbike is low because uh, efficiency of the drivetrain is uh, quite uh, higher and basically the efficiency goes directly into into the heat so in internal combustion engine, you have 55% uh, of heat print. There you have maybe 8%. Uh, so the difference is, uh, uh, you can ch see immediately the difference uh, in that. One of the major benefits is also you don't have uh, the air intake, air filter, nothing. So basically you can um, submerge the bike into the river. It doesn't matter. So it will not, you will not get shocked. Uh, it can handle it. If you would do this with a regular bike, you would destroy the engine. If it runs and it uh, sucks water, you destroy the engine. Uh, what is also the one of the benefits uh, is the simplicity of the drive because of the lack of the uh, clutch and you have both uh, hand brakes on the steering bar. So basically, if you know how to ride the bicycle, you will immediately know also how to ride the bike. You can also uh, basically in active mode, you can... Uh, uh, lean it on the ground, uh, leave it flat, it doesn't matter because uh, you don't have the oil inside which would uh, fill up the head and uh, basically uh, prevent the bike to be started again. All the benefits there. And then you have also the traction control on the rear wheel. You can do um, the, with the maps, with the adjustment of the maps, you can do basically whatever you like. You can uh, reduce the power if you like. If it's too strong, then you can uh, reduce the torque on the wheel. You can also uh, reduce the slip, so limit the slip of the will and the explosivity of the throttle. Did you develop the battery, which is somehow in the, at the core of the system, did you develop the battery on your own? Uh, yes, uh, well, when we started with the development of the motorbike, we already quite well known uh, all the benefits and uh, of the electric drive. And we immediately know that the electric motor will not be the issue. So the battery will be the weakest link basically in the complete bike. So what was necessary then for us was definitely to go into own development of the battery. We quite fast figured it out that it's not possible. Our requirements uh, were uh, adjusted quite high. Immediately we figured it out that on the market you can't buy the cell which could cover this uh, kind of forces, C factors. And basically uh, we tried to make a hybrid battery in the beginning. So it was combined from uh, multi-chemistry cells, so a few different cells combined together in one battery. So it was quite complex, but fun functions really well. So uh, this allows us basically uh, then to make the bike, which is uh, so powerful and uh, one of the kind of the, on the market. Of course, the battery then during the process of development, the battery was too expensive for production and to be installed in the serial bike. So. Uh, but we have uh, quite a lock because in the time of development, also the new cells came on the market, which could handle in the single cell technology. Nevertheless, the, the first battery that we designed 
was one of the kind and could be still used for a lot of purposes for a vertical lift of drones or something. It would be still quite appropriate, but not exactly for the motorbike. But we learned a lot and we uh, then uh, make the own BMS, uh, uh, also the thermal uh, balancing of the cells and everything. Uh, so uh, more or less the quite perfect bat battery, I would say. Okay, so this is for the battery. And now, were all the other components of an e-motorbike developed in-house? Uh, yes, uh, try to imagine. You have uh, basically uh, 70 kilowatts that you need to push inside the 118 kilos. So you can't just take something from the market and install it inside. You are limited with the space and limited with the performance and also with the weight and uh, with the power. So everything in the bike must, uh, must be customly designed and it was from the motor to inverter to, to the software to uh, battery itself uh, to the frame. Of course, we are buying uh, the suspension system and we are buying uh, also the brake system, steering bar and such things. But uh, those are the components that all the companies on the market are buying from the same producers. I see. So combining my two present questions, I mean, what are the characteristics of the exchangeable battery and of the Strix motorbike in general? Exchangeable battery basically allows us to pull out from it constantly uh, more than 50 kilowatts. So the, this means peaks are of course higher, but constantly 50 kilowatts from 6.3 kilowatt hour battery, it's uh, really a lot. Uh, this allows basically the special thermal management of the battery, uh, which is quite uh, state of the art, and also the uh, BMS system uh, that controls the balance, balance the cells. The battery itself is also equipped uh, with a CC standard for the charging, so you can uh, charge the motorbike or battery itself uh, on uh, all uh, regular charging stations for the personal cars now in Europe uh, for DC charging, fast charging. Uh, this the, basically this means that you can charge fully the battery in uh, roughly 12 minutes and uh, 12 minutes give you uh, more than 100 kilometers of range. So this is quite a benefit because the motorbike is small and light. You can't afford to use a AC standard charger on the bike because you add too much weight to it. But with the DC charger, you basically don't, uh, with the CCS DC charging, uh, you don't add weight. It's a software issue and a little communication. And basically, this allows you to do, to use the regular charging grid, in which is now quite a standard in Europe. What considers the bike itself? So when we started with the development, we adjusted the performance of the bike to the professional motocross driver. Basically, what he could handle and transmit to the ground. So this was somehow the limit that we adjusted. Uh, of course, we, we were always comparing it also with the Petrol Brothers, I would say. The bike was designed that it can compete with the Petrol ones, and it could be better from the Petrol ones. So, uh, and it's the top that basically the uh, professional motocross driver could handle. This means you have uh, more than 1,000 newton meters of torque on the rear wheel constantly with the uh, end speeds more than to, uh, 120 kilometers per hour. So the bike, uh, more or less, is the beast. Okay, so you explained the electrical part, let's say, of the machine. But what came next regarding the frame, maybe the suspension system? Did you, did you design something by your own? Yes, of course. Like we said, the electric drivetrain definitely complete. Then also the frame. Uh, the frame was completely designed uh, separately. Uh, uh siping of the so uh, so geometry of the frame itself uh and uh, we have also some things uh, which are which we are pumping up for the future bike itself yeah but so you've presented machine and uh, how did the development of the motorcycle for the military come out the motorcycles were always somehow integrated in the army basically so uh, from from the history on uh, you have the constant use of the motorbikes on the, some special missions uh, so they are somehow integrated experience of, of our own for example so we were driving a lot enduro and we were on the hill on 1500 meters on the one side of the field and watching the mountain on the other side good half an hour we were on the other opposite side of the field crossing the small uh, town, the creeks, uh, through the forest, 
and on the next uh, hill on approximately the same height. And uh, basically already with the petrol ones, nobody could uh, see us or something. So uh, the, uh, then the ideas came up that it's really useful for the all kinds of techniques and it can be uh, quite good integrated in the arm. We also spoke a lot with the police uh, and uh, with uh, with the, uh, the some special army uh, personnel, and figured out a lot of options uh, in which the motorbikes could be uh, used. So uh, we said, this is it; it needs to be uh, prepared. Precisely. I mean, interestingly, the prototype was tested by various NATO armies, not only the Slovenian army, including the U.S. Navy. So. What did the testing look like and what was the reaction of the various testers of those different armies? We prepared basically the uh, polygon, which had uh, all uh, the issues inside. So uh, a small uh, creeks, uh, tough terrain, a uh, uh, little forest on the army polygons, more or less. And then we took with us basically uh, two 500 cubics uh, petrol motorbikes and uh, that one electric. So we have the army personnel had an opportunity to compare them directly with the petrol version. And this was uh, quite a good uh, approach, I would say, because immediately if you sit on one bike and you sit on the other bike and you test the same polygon and you see what is the difference and how easier you handle it, this immediately triggers the, uh, triggers the idea in your mind. Uh, so you immediately know what is the difference and how easy it is to handle it. The bike doesn't have the clutch, the, uh, you have only the throttle. Yeah. It's very simple to control the spin of, uh, on uh, the rear wheel. So basically, even if you are not the professional, you quite fast learn how to drive good. So uh, it brings you uh, immediately uh, to the next level, I would say. So according to you, all the testers were more than enthusiastic with your electric motorbike. Everybody who came back basically uh, uh, didn't have the cro uh, cross. So uh, basically uh, they were they would choose electric. So they had an opportunity to ride on the boat and they would choose electric, all of them. We have also the experience that some of the personnel want to buy it personally. So uh, immediately after the testings, they were asking if they can buy it. <laughs> so <laughs> this, this is this is quite a good, uh, I would say, <laughs> quite a good um, positive thinking. <laughs> oh, see. So depending on those tests, does Strix have special features developed specially for the military? Yes, uh, we are uh, equipping basically the different front mask on the front, uh, which has also ear illuminators for uh, night vision. If you have also spots for the, to put something on on the front, stock for the pistol for uh, uh, on the front uh, steering bar. Uh, we have also one console for the rifle on the back. There is also reinforced uh, back trunk basically on the uh, above the fender, so, so you can uh, get your backpack on and uh, strip it on, and also to put additional some other equipment. Uh, there is also some. Uh, small changes with the plastics and with the plastic camouflage strips. Uh, so you have some options to change them uh, quite rapidly. It depends on the mission. So we, uh, we can prepare stickers. Okay, so after through testing, the Slovenian army ordered a first batch of Strix motorbikes for its special forces. What is the intended use of these machines? Well, quite sure you know that I can't uh, uh, share the info directly about that. I can only say that, that they are going into operation and uh, they will be used by the special forces. But on the, what kind of uh, applications, we can't uh, say. You know, okay. the doctrine of, uh, doctrine of <clears throat> warfare basically is changing. Uh, you can see also now what is happening in U uh, Ukraine. So uh, basically the bike is very useful and it's always used for uh, some special missions. So uh, what they are planning to use it for, it's uh, uh, for now, it's uh, top secret. Yes, but of course, it will be for stealth parts of operations with, where silent is mandatory. We can expect yes. that. Yes, yes. Um, exceeding the military market itself, um, the competition in the e-motor market is getting really strong. What is Strix? Why is Strix better than other electric motorbikes? 
Well, we started when the technology was ready enough. Uh, we started already before on the basically on the construction machines with the uh, different propulsion systems. We have quite a lot of experience with that. And we started on the bike when the technology was ready that it can compete with the petrol one. So now the development only goes uh, further and further. We are already developing basically the third generation of the battery uh, from the one that we are now installing. And uh, basically you will have a uh, uh, Strix company is always is committed that also uh, in uh, from uh, 15 years or more, uh, we will update the batteries of the old uh, bikes. Because the battery is now the uh, fastest thing that is uh, proceeding and developing on the market. And basically, uh, we we are using quite standard cells that we can change uh, depending on the what comes, what is in development in the companies, which, which we are correlating on the cells itself on this field. And uh, what I would say regarding the bike itself, uh, there are no compromises. So we are doing it for the performance. Uh, and this is on the first spot, performance and use. So um, there, there is no compromises in the price or something of the components. Okay, so what's, one more question combining civilian and military aspects. You're solving problems of enjoying riding unbeaten trucks during winter months, aren't you? Yeah, a little. Uh, we have basically also a snow kit that could, could be put on, side, uh, on the uh, bike. Uh, this uh, snow kit, uh, you immediately know that the bike must be strong because uh, for the snow kit on the regular bike, you need at least 450 or 500 cubics. Four oh. stroke, if you are using two stroke, then 300. And uh, without that, it's not uh, the fun. It's too weak. So uh, when we put it on the bike and we tried it out, uh, it runs perfectly. And uh, But experience, it's hard to explain because you need to sit on the bike and try this somehow because uh, you can't compare it with something else. So you could explain to somebody how funny it is. This is also one of the approaches. Um, uh, people always think that uh, electricity at the batteries and the minus temperatures are not going well together. Well, uh, R goes to minus 30. To minus 20 is still uh, quite a, lo a lot of capacity, so we are not falling with the capacity much. Uh, and I believe that below minus 20 also, um, you need to be a, a, a persuade rider to go and ride in minus 20. No, so you are targeting both military and civilian markets. But when will the first e-motorbikes be delivered? First bikes will be delivered to Slovenian Army, so it is now in uh, November. Slovenian Army is not buying only the motorbikes, they are buying also the snow kits uh, with them. Uh, and uh, basically the Strix, uh, Strix uh, military heart enduros and belonging ski track systems are intended for operations used by the Slovenian Armed Forces, in particular by the reconnaissance units, snipers, special forces and other specialized forces. So. Uh, this year and uh, next year uh, in first quarter we will start with uh, supplying uh, basically with delivering the first bikes to also the civilians all right well i think except if you want to add something but I mean, it's very very appealing i mean uh, the, your, your e motorbikes is something that must be further tested and demonstrated where where can people find more information about your machine on our web page uh, this is definitely one of the ways and of course, in the next following months, uh, it will be possible also to test it.